Hello guys, my name is Vijay. I am working as Senior Lead Engineer in FSRO. In this session, uh, I will be continuing with the data view interview questions. So I have already uh, created two videos on the same, uh, which I have uploaded in my channel. You can uh, look into uh, those questions. So I am going ahead with the 21st question uh, in this video. So, so the question is, merge two arrays and remove duplicate. So these, uh, this is, uh, I mean this is an object which is having the values as uh, arrays so we'll see the demo for the same yeah so merge two arrays and remove duplicates so first of all i have to merge these two arrays right this is single this is one array this is second array so so let me use values of in order to uh, capture the arrays right so now uh, by using values of i was able to fetch the uh, arrays now uh, I have to club this so you can use flatten function so flatten function what it will do it will uh, merge uh, array of arrays to an array a single array like this now if you see right uh, we have duplicate values like uh, 4 you could see here and also we have to uh, repeat I mean we could see it twice so now let's remove the duplicate values so we can use distinct by function and uh, uh, you can you can simply type item here so that way you can remove the uh, duplicate items uh, uh, within the array now you see uh, we have removed duplicate uh, duplicates as well and we have matched the these two arrays okay so this way we have covered uh, three to uh, three functions one is values of flatten and distinct by okay so let's go ahead with the next question combine multiple objects into single object so this is an array of objects and we, we required uh, a single object as an output so let's see the demo so I am using different example but the concept is the same so array of objects uh, where each and every object is having one key value pair now in order to club uh, these array of objects into a single object right we can use reduce function okay and uh, so this way what you can do uh, you can club both these uh, uh, I mean all the entries within this array into one single object okay so this this uh, function can be performed on array and it will uh, it will output an object so uh, this way we have uh, uh, we have merged an array of objects into one single object okay so we have covered this now let's go ahead with the next question swap key value pairs so that is the next question swap key value pairs so yeah let me try to print uh, the payload so this is the payload now our agenda is to uh, swap the swap the uh, key value pairs so so for that uh, first of all in order to traverse through all the items within an array right we have to use map function so all good here now each and every item is an object right so let's use item here and what can uh, we use we can use map object and within this uh, yeah here this is where we have to uh, swap these uh, key value pairs now what you can do here you can keep uh, value so this is the convention value and colon key so this way uh, we are able to swap swap the key value pairs right here the key is message one and message two values are like hello world and hello muli and we have swapped right so this is how you can do so so we are able to uh, finish this particular uh, question as well now let's go ahead with the next question assign incremental keys to the objects in an array so this is like array of objects now instead of uh, uh, I mean instead of mapping it as name only uh, we can increment uh, like name one name two name three and so on so how we can do we'll see 
in the demo. So, so this is the input which is array of objects. So let's type payload. Now again, we have to traverse through each and every uh, object, right? Or each and each and every en entry of this particular array. So for that, we uh, we have to use map function, and uh, each and every item is an object. So let's use map object function. Now within this, right? Uh, uh, what you can do? So yeah, we we have to use key as key only. But along with that, what we have to do uh, is that let let me put value as well. Now you see there is no difference between input and output. Now this is where we have to uh, add the index or uh, we have to put uh, concatenate the incremental value. Okay. So for that, right, uh, I'll be making use of uh, index uh, plus one. Uh, one second name one and name one so okay so here what uh, what is the issue you see it is taking this particular value okay now uh, basically we have to take the maps index not the objects index so I'll distinguish between these two indexes so I'll, I'll put maps uh, index as index one and uh, map objects uh, index as index two now here I'll, I'll uh, configure index one so this way you see we have to use the index of map right uh, I mean the the, the parent uh, one so that is an array so uh, index index one is zero and index uh, one in the second iteration it is one so so if, if you use index two there won't be any difference okay so this is how you can uh, you can um, what do you say? Uh, increment the keys like this. So let's go ahead with the next question. So what is the difference between map object and pluck? So we have discussed about map object. So this will take uh, input as object and the output also will be object. But for pluck, the input is object and the output is an array. So uh, yeah, so this is an object, right? Now, if you use, okay, we can apply map object as well. So let's apply that. Uh, I'll simply keep it as key colon value. So there won't be any difference in the output. Okay, the same thing we got. Now, uh, if you want to convert an object to an array, right? So this is not the right uh, function to use. You can use plug. So plug and again you can use uh, key value pair like key and value as value now you see this particular object uh, was added to an array or converted to an array of object so this is how uh, this is the scenario where you can use plug to convert an an object to an array Let's go ahead with the next question and that is how to uh, write a uh, database script to check if, if the input is a prime number. So this is the question. Let's go with the demo. So first of all, what uh, what is a prime number? A prime number is a number uh, greater than one, which is only divisible by one and itself. Okay, so these are the uh, a few prime numbers. Okay, let's let's see. So, in order to understand uh, if a given number is a prime number or not, yeah, it should be it should be divisible by itself and one, but not with any other number. So then only we can call it as a prime number. Now, uh, the algorithm is that uh, from let's say I have entered something like seven here. Okay. Now you have to uh, you have to generate a a simple array where uh, starting from 2 to uh, half of I mean payload dot number by 2 okay so that that means 2 to 3 these two numbers or let me enter 17 now you see uh, we have generated an array with starting from 2 uh, to uh, 8 which is uh, half of uh, 
17 so why we have to do like this just to uh, reduce the number of iterations okay now uh, once you generate this array right uh, so we have to check if the if the given number is having any of uh, I mean if the given number right uh, is having uh, the factors other than one and itself so now you see we have to check uh, if 2 is a factor or 3 is a factor or 4 5 6 or 7 8 all these uh, any of these are factors or not that we have to check okay so now uh, as I have shown you right this is the array that we are generating now w once we are done with this right we have to check if uh, so we have to pass uh, so let's let's go ahead with uh, so if you see right uh, if I show you the reminders right uh, uh, so uh, you see there, there is no zero here that means none of the numbers starting from uh, 2 3 4 and so on 8 right none of the numbers uh, is a factor for 17 right so that is why you could see uh, the reminders uh, for all these numbers right uh, is 1 2 uh, you could see here okay so that in this case we can call a given number as a prime number okay because we don't see uh, any of the reminders with zero here okay so for that we have to write a condition right so now let's write the condition so if of uh, so first of all if then if the input number is uh, 2 right if it is 2 then uh, we can uh, it's, it's a prime number by default so uh, let me write it as prime number now else if um, okay payload dot now yeah if yeah if reminders contain zero right then it's a prime number okay uh, then it's not a prime number I'm sorry else it's a prime number okay now um, let's enter 2 here so 2 is a prime number so uh, we got the output as prime number now let's go with 4 see 4 is not a prime number right uh, you you are not seeing four here in this list okay so not a prime number five it's a prime number let's go with 13 it's a prime number and uh, 23 so this is a prime number so this is how you can write a uh, a program uh, within the data views uh, right uh, for a prime number in order to identify a given number uh, a prime number or not this is how you can write the code okay now let's go ahead with the next question that is find the factorial value of a given number so uh, you'll be given with uh, some number and you have to find out the factorial so basically uh, uh, factorial in the sense let's say if the given number is 5 right so you you just have to basically multiply uh, 5 to 1 I mean so 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so this is uh, the so after the multiplication whatever is the value right that is the factorial of 5 okay now uh, if you are given 10 right so you have to multiply all the numbers till okay multiply all the uh, numbers till uh, 1 so 10 into 9 into 8 into and so on 1 so that is the factorial now let's see how to uh, how to uh, populate the factorial for the given number so so first thing is that you have to print uh, values from 1 to uh, let me remove this so you have to print the values from 1 to this particular number so I just have uh, uh, what do you say I'm just populating in a reverse order but it doesn't matter right but this is how we uh, we 
uh, think about a factorial like we will come in the in a reverse manner that's why I have explicitly kept this minus 1 to 0 you can also remove this there won't be any difference okay now once you list out this uh, uh, array right what you have to do you have to multiply all the all these things so so you can use uh, array reduce function uh, so So here you have to multiply right so yeah so this is how you can do so basically you're actually multiplying uh, each and every item with the previous uh, result okay 5 into 4 20 into 3 something like that okay so 5 into 4 so this will be one one result and uh, 20 into 3 60 into uh, 2 and 120 into 1 so finally we got 120 as a result now if I enter 10 here right it will give the so uh, yeah this is the uh, value for the 10 factorial okay so we are done with this question let's go ahead with the uh, next question so group the objects based on city so I, I so I have an example here you see uh, this is an array of objects now uh, we need to group all these objects based upon the city now if I print the payload right simply so the input and output will look as is now in order to group array of objects so you, ha you have to use group by function so we have to group uh, all these objects based upon the city right so item dot city so now you see uh, we have two cities with uh, Hyderabad I mean two objects where the city is Hyderabad one object with uh, Delhi so that's why the output is uh, grouped based upon the cities so we are done with this question let's go ahead with the next question so how to skip the header in CSV okay so this is the CSV file where we have the header and the uh, three uh, rows of information and if, if your requirement is to skip the header in the output right uh, you, you can add this particular property header equal to false so let's see the same here now if I comment out uh, comment it out right you see uh, in the output right we we are seeing the header as well like the way uh, in the input now if you don't want that right you just have to introduce that to the database script now you see we could only see three rows and these are like only the information without the header let's go ahead uh, with the last question of this video so how to remove the indentation from the JSON output so here uh, I'm trying to convert the CSV to JSON CSV to JSON so let me remove this now when you when you have converted CSV to JSON right yeah this is how it has uh, displayed the output now if you want to save uh, let's say if you save this as a payload right it will occupy uh, it will have some memory and if you want to reduce the memory right uh, uh, you can use indent equal to false so this way right uh, this when you save this particular file uh, I mean this particular output as a file right this will have less memory so this will be very useful when you I deal with huge payloads so uh, syntactically both are same but here this way you are uh, reducing the memory so we are done with um, all the data view interview questions for this video I'll try to add few more questions in the next video thank you so much